Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and we were discussing all about public international law. When we are discussing about international law, one common thing that we see everywhere is municipal law. And we try see the comparison between both of these laws. What are the relationship or what are the differences? We try see many aspects and most of the time the question is, are they same or are they different? Now, what are the relationship theories? That's what exactly we are going to approach in this video. We are going to discuss two important relationship theories of international law and municipal law. And further, there are few conflict theories also. What are the two main theories and what are the conflict theories, which is what we are going to see in my next slide. So the question is simple. The question is whether the international law and municipal laws are same or different. Now, there are two predominant theories. One says, yes, they are the same. And the other one says, no, they are not same. So the one which is saying they are same is monistic theory. And the other one is dualistic theory. Other than that, we have four important conflict theories, which are theory of specific adoption, theory of transformation, theory of delegation, and theory of harmonization or coordination. I'm going to discuss only the monistic theory and dualistic theory in this particular video. And I'm going to discuss all the conflict theories in my next video. So let us try understand what are the monistic theory and dualistic theory in my next two slides. The first theory that is monistic theory believes that the international laws as well as the municipal laws are one and the same. That is why I have put that dancing same in this slide. That means all the laws are same. It might be municipal laws or maybe international laws, but they are one and the same. And this theory is supported by Mosser, Selle, Kelsen and Martens. While studying monistic theory or the monism theory, we need to go through two important definitions, one by O. Cornell, the other one by Starkey. Now Cornell says the objective of all laws is human welfare, whether it is state municipal law or international law. He tries to compare between the municipal law and international law by bringing the aspect of object of law. Now what is the object of law as for him? It is for the human welfare. It doesn't matter whether it is coming from municipal laws or international laws. By saying so, he says all the laws are same. So basically there is no difference and they are all monistic. That's why he says the laws are same as far as municipal laws or international laws are concerned. Now Starke says international law is part of state municipal law and therefore decisions can be given by municipal court according to the rules of international law. He merges both of these laws. He says international law is already part of municipal law and that is how municipal courts are getting authority to give decisions and they are basically the rules of international law. So they are not separate. They are one and the same, which is what Starke said. To strengthen their thinking way, they are making several statements where they are bringing relationship between municipal laws and the international laws. They are saying these municipal laws are binds the individuals whereas the international laws are binding the states and when we are saying the international laws are binding the state, who is state? State is because of individuals and that way international laws final objective is also for the individuals and that way there is a close relationship between international laws and municipal laws and the most of the sources as far as municipal laws as well as international laws are concerned are one and the same so they are one and the same that is how they are arguing and they are also saying that the international laws are respecting the constitution of different state by that way they have direct connection and finally the main object of the municipal laws as well as international laws is welfare of the state and its individuals so they are one and the same and they are also having the final object of keeping legal order of the states and individuals so it is all coming under single umbrella so the municipal laws as well as international laws are one and the same. This is what they are arguing. If they are arguing this, there should be some other party who is arguing something else, right? That is what we are going to discuss in my next slide, which is a different theory. While the monistic theory or the people who supported monism theory said that the municipal laws and international laws are one and the same, there were few other authors who were supporting the dualistic theory by saying municipal laws and international laws are not one and the same and few major authors among them are Garner, Anzilotti, Willoughby and Trippel. Anzilotti very clearly said that there is a big difference between the state laws or municipal laws versus international laws because the source itself is different. 
the fundamental principle of state municipal law in compliance of law enacted by the state legislature while principle of international law is pacta sunt servenda that means the source for municipal law is the legislature whereas the source for international law is doctrine of pacta sunt servenda or the promises must be kept now there is a huge difference between the source of laws that way they are dual they are not the same that is what agility has to say starke said the main foundation of the proponents of dualistic theory is that it is not starke's thought he says it is the main foundation of the proponents of dualistic theory whoever is proposing the dualistic theory how are they thinking they are thinking that state municipal laws and international laws are two different legal systems because the nature of international law is fundamentally different from state municipal law he says the proponents of dualistic theory or whoever is proposing the dualistic theory are thinking that the nature of international laws are different from the nature of state municipal law which is what starke has to say so if they are saying they are different they should have some main criteria to prove that no for that they have three important zones first being source for municipal laws the source is legislation passed by the state whereas for international law it is the results of customs and treaties so the source is different secondly when it comes to execution part municipal laws have the power of sanction whereas international law lacks the power of sovereign that is the second difference and finally the scope when it comes to municipal law it is covering all the individuals and individuals or the relationship between individuals and organizations or the relationship between organizations and organizations or maybe the relationship between individuals organization with the states whereas when it comes to international law it is the relationship between state to state so the main scope of international law goes to state to state whereas the main focus of municipal laws is all about individuals organizations and the state itself so there is a difference between scope also by keeping these three verticals that is the sources are different the execution is different and the scope is different they are saying it is not one and same the municipal laws and international laws are two different types of laws with that i am concluding the two important theories relating to the relationship between the international laws and municipal laws in my next video i am going to discuss four important conflict theories which are also very important as far as relationship between the municipal laws and international laws are concerned hope this video was helpful if you feel this is right please subscribe my channel please like share and comment my videos all the very best for whatsoever purpose you are referring this video and thanks again